Marines and Sailors, this is Gunnery Sergeant Sean McCullough at the California Superbike School Advanced Motorcycle Operators Course aboard Marine Corps Air Station in Beaufort, South Carolina with the internationally acclaimed motorcycle riding instructor, Keith Code. Yeah, I'm Keith Code and I'm the director of the California Superbike School and here at the Beaufort Marine Corps Air Station, it's, uh, the, it's the AMOS program, the Advanced Motorcycle Operators School. This course was developed specifically for the Marine Corps by Keith to increase motorcycle rider skill levels and promote safer riding. The staff of the California Superbike School are all highly skilled, trained individuals that effectively translate the science of riding a motorcycle to Marines and Navy personnel. My name is Pete Kastanek and I'm the Deputy Chief Riding Coach here at the California Superbike School. Good morning, I'm Jason Payton. All right, James Toohey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, guys, Paul Molinari. My name is Misty Hurst, and I am a level three riding coach with the California Superbike School. The California Superbike School and my staff are here to train Marines to ride motorcycles correctly. We've uh, discovered, over the last uh, 28 years of doing schools, we've discovered some of the real foundation parts of uh, riding motorcycles, and it takes it far beyond the normal training, where we, we actually push these riders into uh, being in you know, kind of extreme conditions. Right, but, but we go for really, really tight technique. To start the morning off, we conducted roll call and were briefed about what the day had in Morris, store for us. Sylvain, Vader, Rothlin, Sloan, Harris. After introductions and class to familiarize the students, the staff gave us number vests and organized us into squads of five to six people, with Keith Code himself overseeing the action of the learning experience he designed specifically for Marines and Sailors. There isn't any one thing that's more important than all the other things when it comes to riding. You know, motorcycle riding is a pretty complex activity. You're, you're, you're in, you come up to a corner, everybody does it straight away is okay, right? <laughs> that's really not a problem. Everybody can go straight. It's when they have to avoid an obstacle or go around a corner. That's when we run into problems, yeah. right? And the problems of riding a motorcycle are the problems of riding a motorcycle. So once the rider knows how to control those situations and has a good sequence drilled into that he knows what he's supposed to be doing, he or she knows what they're supposed to be doing while they're, while they're avoiding something or going through a corner, then we've got a good rider. Our first event covered the basics of turning and allowed the instructors to observe and evaluate how we handled our bikes while performing the maneuver. All right, so what we're doing here is called the steering drill. And all we're trying to do is uh, sort out steering technique, just fine tune it and make it perfect. Doing good. Made some good improvements. Definitely knows how to steer the bike now. Once we successfully completed the first event, we were qualified to move on to Route 66. Okay, sure. This is, uh, we call this Route 66, and basically it's a high speed steering drill. So we're working on getting the bike turned quickly and effectively and uh, to see a nice smooth ride the whole way through. So we have a few drills that uh, we're ha we have running right now. One of them we call Route 66, which is basically a high-speed steering drill. And what we're looking for is the rider to be fully in control of his motorcycle at higher speeds. Generally, they can show competence at speeds between 5 and 20 miles an hour, but this is where we're looking for competence between the speeds of 40 and 60, and an ability to very accurately control the motorcycle and point it exactly where he wants it pointed. And uh, a coach follows him and leads him on another motorcycle and looks at every aspect of their skill and technique to make sure that if there's anything that isn't 100% perfect, it's taken up right at that point and not let uh, go by. What I want you to do is be a good passenger on your own bike. The bike goes this way, I want everything going that way. Good. See how you just sort of drop your shoulder into the turn? Good. Same thing when the bike goes this way, everything goes over that way. So this drill here is we're running each student through at 15 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour, and 25 miles an hour. And we're looking for steering errors or possibly not going with the motorcycle. And it's based off a drill we did earlier with them without the cones where we're getting the student to correctly counter steer the bike and go with the bike. When the bike's leaning, we want the student to lean with the motorcycle. All right, so what we're trying to do here is just get a baseline for their braking at different speeds, like 40, 50, and 60 miles an hour. Uh, find out how long it takes them to stop, and then we'll, we'll uh, go through some braking technique, teach them how to brake, 
and then run through this again at 40, 50, and 60 and see how much we can get them to improve their braking distance. We use the radar to get them up to speed so it's accurate for everybody. And then they stop at this point on the cones. And then uh, we check the distance that it took them to stop from that point with a rangefinder. And then we run them through it again after uh, we go through some braking technique. Advanced motorcycle training is good for anybody, even if they just ride in a parking lot, because you still have to do the same things with the bike. You know, to stabilize the motorcycle, you have to be able to you understand what, it, what stabilizes the bike, whether you're going 15 miles an hour, whether you're going 125 miles an hour on a tr racetrack someplace. Okay? All the basics really are the same. These, again, they're foundation skills. They're not beginner skills. They're not advanced skills. You know, we take somebody who's a world champion motorcycle road racer, right? The bikes go 200 miles an hour and they do it whenever they can. Right? They, ha they ha need to know the same things that we're teaching right here. So, and the street rider is exactly the same. You know, two wheels, they got six, the bikes have six controls. You've got to use the same six controls. In order to help students learn dangerous lessons in a controlled environment, Keith has developed specialized training bikes. Well, the first training, uh, the first specialty training bike I built was back in 1984, and that's our panic brake rig. And that one I put together because I saw from our track training, the riders had a lot of uncertainties on that front brake. They had a lot of uncertainties, a lot of fear of what would happen if the brake would lock up. And uh, I used to do schools for uh, racers, and I saw that they had the same problem. So when I started doing the, the superbike school, and, and of course that translated over into the, this advanced motorcycle operator school, uh, I thought, you know, if, you, if, if they're afraid of the front brake, if they're afraid of stopping the motorcycle really quickly, afraid of what will happen when the bike locks up, that's going to be the thing that will get them in trouble. So, the, the riders benefit enormously from it because they've already been there. They've already locked that thing up. That's the extreme. You can't go any further than that, right? So we, we put them in that situation so that they experience it, and then the next time it happens, hopefully, uh, they, you know, they're, they're not so panic-stricken. They can really use the brake to its, to its maximum advantage. Like, like the guy, there was a guy here, I think, uh, not too long ago who, who uh, had been through the school, and a deer popped out in front of him, and he, he had uh, good enough braking skills after he did the school, so he didn't hit the deer. And uh, we were happy to hear that. That was great. The braking bike is designed to allow a student to lock the front brake without crashing. This simulates a panic stop and teaches us the limits of front wheel traction, as well as how to save a front end slide from turning into a trip to the hospital. Okay, so what they're doing right now is riding the panic brake bike, which has outriggers and uh, those save you from crashing. And the whole idea is to go out there and ride it and get them to lock up the front brake to see what that feels like. And if the bike t tips over as a result, well, you got the outriggers to keep you up. And then what we want to have them do is get to the point where they can lock up the front brake and then ease out the brake pressure just enough to stop the bike from locking up but continue slowing down, which takes uh, a certain amount of finesse with your brake control, I guess you could call that. In other words, take over the uh, anti-lock braking roll. Another training bike developed by Keith is the lean bike. This machine helps us focus on throttle control, body position, and visual skills while at the limit of cornering traction. We're uh, running them through the, this bike, what we call lean bike, uh, giving them an idea of how to hang off the bike properly and the benefits of hanging off the bike. Uh, the lean bike is a unique drill with a unique piece of machinery and the purpose of that is to get the rider comfortable on the motorcycle and show him proper body position, especially while negotiating a corner. You see racers hanging off motorcycles and quite often street riders don't feel that that applies to them. However, hanging off a motorcycle has a very good benefit of reducing the amount of lean a rider needs. So if a rider were to enter a corner too fast, or let's just say he realized after he was bending it into the corner, it looked like there was some sort of surface irregularity, some sort of sand, water, whatever, some sort of hazard there, he can use his body to reduce the amount of lean that the motorcycle is going to be carrying through the corner. So while it may look like a uh, aggressive position on the motorcycle, it actually is pretty uh, prudent and it's something you can use, like I said, to reduce the lean angle and increase the ground clearance in a corner. And 
that can really save a guy's bacon. Uh, if you use it at the right place at the right time, the guy finds himself in any trouble. Keith taught us about the importance of throttle control and how it impacts every aspect of a motorcycle's handling. This skill becomes even more critical when leaned over in a corner. After a period of instruction by the legend himself, we joined back up with our instructors at the road course to demonstrate what we learned. These guys are working on some throttle control and getting the bike stable out there, getting the throttle cracked on and having a nice roll on through the corner to get the idea of what it's like to ride a stable motorcycle. So we have a road course which they take numerous laps around and the whole idea is to work on, focus down on one particular skill and because they're going around the track a number of times, they're able to work on that one skill on that one corner until they get it perfect. And the main idea of what we're doing here at the school is we'll come up with a drill, we'll have the riders do it, and if they're messing up on it, we will continue to drill them until they're a pass. But the whole idea is to repeat doing something over and over again until they become skilled at it, just like a fire drill. You don't do it once and then you're good. You gotta do it over and over and over again until you really, really are conversant with the whole idea, the technology behind this particular skill. And of course, a road course is perfect because there are no other distractions. They don't have to watch out for other traffic or pay attention to anything other than what they've been taught and make sure that they're applying it perfectly. If they're not applying it perfectly, we pull them in, we correct them and send them right back out until they get it. One of the more advanced courses the California Superbike School had to offer was the downshifting class. Some realized that properly downshifting while braking isn't as easy as it looks. All right, so right now we're just working on braking and downshifting timing, getting the, the throttle synced with the clutch and, and shifter action, and then and adding the brake and getting that timing down using the front brake. On braking and downshifting with a motorcycle, that is uh, pretty much the ultimate multitasking as far as motor vehicle operators go. Going into a corner, you could potentially have as many as six controls going at one point, and we'll find that almost every rider we come across is dangerously deficient at using multiple controls at the same time. And that's something that we really push them to get down, at least to some acceptable level. It also sort of proves the point to the rider himself that there's a lot more to learn and they could be in far better control of the motorcycle if they could operate the brake, the throttle, the gear shift all at the same time smoothly. A reaction time drill was also performed at the end of the two-day school. The wide view drill is important mainly because when you're out there riding on the road, you have certain hazards that will come in from one side or the other. And if someone isn't practicing good visual skills, things can tend to sneak up on them. It's a pretty sad fact to uh, find out what the average reaction times of, of the normal motorists out on the streets are, but it's pretty bad. It's something along the lines of uh, 2.25 seconds before they actually execute any sort of uh, evasive maneuver when they notice something that's dangerous. So a motorcyclist not having four wheels but just two and very little protection has got to be really, much, uh, really on his toes to be able to avoid such things and it starts with good visual skills to be able to see any potential dangers and react to them in plenty of time. Someone with great visual skills doesn't even, even need to have a good reaction time because if they see it long before it happens, they're already reacting to it even if they're not instantly reacting to it. So you have someone with great visual skills and good reaction time, that's as good as it gets. After we successfully completed all of the lessons and drills, everyone received graduation certificates autographed by Keith Cove. Can we make everybody perfect in a weekend? No, we can't. We can't make everybody perfect. But we have yet to fail making, making these riders uh, up and down the East Coast and on Marine Corps air stations. We, we haven't failed yet to, to improve their skills enormously. Speaking for everyone that attended the California Superbike School, that was literally one hell of a ride. All right, hey, this is uh, Marines, Navy, Navy one team, one fight.